Das hängt auch damit zusammen, dass wir in Köln sozusagen inoffiziell die Arena mit dem Depeche Mode Konzert eröffnen werden. Das ist Ausdruck der Freude darüber, dass es in Köln ein so fantastisches Publikum gibt, eine fantastische neue Halle und wir freuen uns ganz besonders am Anfang sozusagen diese Halle richtig einweihen zu können mit Depeche Mode und da sind wir eigentlich gleich beim Thema. Eine, nach fünf Jahren wieder eine Tournee von Depeche Mode. Ein Ereignis nicht, für ihre, nicht nur für ihre Fans und die Medien, sondern so ganz sicher ein großes Musikereignis. Es wird ca. 25 Termine in Europa plus fünf, äh, 25 Termine in Europa und fünf noch im ähm, äh, Osten umfassen, das heißt in Russland, in, den, ähm, in, den, ähm, äh, in Lettland, äh, Estland. Ähm, diese Daten sind noch nicht aufgeführt hier, aber ich wollte sie auf jeden Fall Ihnen zur Kenntnis geben, dass, diese, Tag, dass die, diese Tage am Anfang der Tour stehen werden. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very, very glad to be given the opportunity to present um, Depeche Mode here um, for the announcement of their first European tour in five years. I think this is not only a special reason for that, the Rhine and Ruhr have always been the heart of the Depeche Mode um, fan group base and also we are playing, we are, so, uh, we are inaugurating the um, Cologne Arena. The and would you please welcome Depeche Mode? Sorgen, dass bitte alle Mikrofone angeschaltet sind. An die Technik. Ich möchte die Fotografen noch mal darauf hinweisen, dass wir bitte keine Fotos während der Pressekonferenz machen, mit Rücksicht auf unsere Freunde vom Fernsehen, ja? Jeder, der sich nicht daran hält, der muss leider den Raum sofort verlassen. Yeah, I'm very sorry, Alan couldn't make it. No, I think so. We told everybody not to smoke because he insists to smoke alone. <laughs> Ich freue mich sehr, heute hier die Band Depeche Mode vorstellen zu können. Andrew Fletcher, Dave Gahan, Martin Gore, Sie gehen auf Tour. Ich bitte um Fragen. Ja. Sorry. Um, He insisted on this. 
<laughs> I, think not, I already introduced her, so here I introduced oh, okay. her again. Okay. Thank you very much for coming here, gentlemen. We're delighted to have you here in Cologne. There's a special reason, of course, it's me, but also the arena in Cologne, which we're on, inaugurating with the concept of um, Depeche Mode. And I've said that this is always, the Rhine War has always been the heart of the fan base in Germany. And I think uh, uh, Andy would la now like to have, like to um, say a couple of words to you. Thank you very much, Andy. I just want to thank uh, Marek for promoting the game um, and putting this all together. It's been a fantastic thank you. In fact, it's for all the uh, reps from all the different countries. And thanks to our manager, Jonathan, who's uh, kept us together in the last four years. And that's been very hard. <laughs> and I think four years ago, when we finished the last tour, you know, we thought maybe it'd be the last Depeche Mode tour. But we've since recorded, which we think is a very good album. We've just been in the studio for the last three months recording new material. And this next tour, which we're all very happy about, we think it's going to be one of the best Depeche Mode tours. We're going to be doing all our best tracks for the last 12 years. So it'll be a historical perspective, and we're very much looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay. Nice one, huh? Can I ask you a question? How do you feel about being on the road over this kind of long time? Are you um, expecting more? I think we're, you know, now I think we're looking forward to it. I think to go on tour last time would have been a mistake for us because the, the previous tour was, was just too long, it was 15 months long. And for us to go on tour last year, although there was a long break between the, the, the previous tour that we did and, and the one that we're about to take now, to go on tour last year would have been like too short a time for us. We, were, we still had too many bad memories of that tour which was 15 months long and this time we're, we're like taking it in our stride we're doing a, a four month tour and just to see how things go and we're looking forward to that because I think we can we can handle a four month tour that's not that's not too long we can we've done like far longer tours in the past and this one we are looking forward to you know at that time it would have been a mistake for us to do it but now we're yeah we're really looking forward to it Actually, no, I think it was pretty positive. I think people understood. Um, it, it would have been insane for us to um, take that on at that time. I think not only would have been cheating ourselves, we would have been cheating our fans because we just wasn't ready. And, um, you know, it was quite a big ordeal just getting together the three of us and recording another record. And after Alan departed, we, we, you know, we had to have a rethink about how we were going to work and in the studio. And um, um, we had to find people to fulfil that role that Alan played and so you know it was too much to take on it, it took took quite a while probably about six months during the recording of, of Ultra that um, before we really settled in and, and became okay with each other and not that we disliked each other I think it was just each other, it was <laughs> it was it was just that um, you know everybody had kind of been through a lot of different things and um, you know, uh, getting familiar with just working again, you know, um, took some time. Meldung? Um, what do we have to expect from your live performance? I think, um, like I say, it's going to be a historical perspective um, uh, with this 86 to 90, uh, 98, all the songs that we recorded in that, in that period. We're going to be doing most of the, the sort of big songs in that, in that period, plus a couple of song, earlier songs as well. So it's going to be sort of a, a more of a celebration of, um, of our history. It, it won't be like four guys on stage playing their instruments, three. <laughs> <laughs> and a few extras. Yeah. I'll be singing. <laughs> and I'm working on my new dance routines as well. <laughs> a lot's happened since the last tour. There's been like the Spice Girls and stuff like that. So we've been working very hard to... We, um, we've been watching it very carefully and I think fans are going to be surprised what's going to be happening. Our, co our coordination's a little out, but we're getting there. We're a bit rickety. That has gone through some uh, trouble times. Has that been influenced in your new album? Well, the new al we won't actually be releasing a new album. Uh, there's going to be some new songs. Uh, um, I don't know, I think the atmosphere that we're recording at the moment is, is a really good atmosphere. Um, so perhaps that's the best way that, 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 that we're, it's being influenced, the fact that we're all healthy and, um, and having, a good, you know, having a good time at the moment. I think we're very grateful as well that, uh, I am anyway, I think I speak for the others as well, that we get to do this, you know? So, um, you know, yeah, making Ultra was, was a process and it was like a lot of what you're talking about really and uh, 
you know, now we're more comfortable. It's just good to be working again, you know. Um, Excuse me, could you please you speak, speak a little bit louder, everybody, so everybody in the room can hear, and then the band also. Thank you very much. So how many new songs are you going to present on your tour? How many new songs? We'll be, we'll be playing um, uh, a, a few songs from Ultra, and um, there'll be a, a new song from this Greatest Hits. We've got a couple of new songs. There's a couple of new songs we don't know if we're playing yet as well, you know. So. Well, in, well, in total, we'd be playing about 18 to 19 songs, you know, um, of which we've got this one song that no one's heard yet. Plus, we've got another two songs that no one's heard yet, but we're not sure if we're playing them. But of course, we haven't performed uh, the songs from Ultra yet as well, so and we only we could, uh, performed them a couple of times. So that, that's a good thing for the fans to look out for as well. I mean, it's quite strange, I have to say, sorry, but um, normally. Um, you, you do a tour, you do an album, then you do a tour. Now we've uh, fact, finally avoided that sort of routine, so it's it's quite nice that this this actual tour will not be just uh, promoting a new album as such. So, so it's going to be more of a historical perspective. Live, I think we play, you know, possibly about eighteen songs, usually eighteen to twenty songs, and we we sort of like sat down and did this list of songs that that we feel we have to play, and I think there's like we're at a stage now where I think there's about sixteen songs over the last. 12 years or so, that we feel are not even contentious, that we don't even argue about, that we feel we have to play. You know, it's, it's just, that is how it is. You know, that's like, there are, there are eight, 16 songs or so that, that I think people would feel che cheated if we didn't play. So, you know, we, we build from that. So there's 16 songs you probably know we're going to play. <laughs> the last 16 singles. <laughs> and, and a couple of really old ones. <laughs> Uh, is the Mr. Anton Corbyn, has he planned the original side of the show? No, Anton. <laughs> <laughs> so you're sounding very much like Anton. <laughs> um, he, he, may, he may be involved in the, um, some of the stage show, but we haven't yet um, uh, decided on who we're going to use. Um, um, we're, we're still looking at like, uh, three, uh, like about three different designs and... Um, just keeping an open mind, we haven't yet decided. I think our fans are really loyal, you know. Um, we've kind of like, I think we've always been sort of, um, I don't know what it, why, but, but we've pretty much like created our own little niche. And um, fans have stuck with us and grown with us as well, which is really nice. And even today, just doing this press conference, there's, there's quite a few fans outside, and it's really nice. You know, they've been very loyal to us, and I don't think that's a worry. And to be honest, you know, we I don't think it was a consideration. You know, like Martin said earlier, we we just didn't even consider touring at all with the last record. You know, um, and there's always been pretty big gaps in between our touring. I think the thing is, you know. We've been together now for 17 or 18 years, um, and band, we've seen bands come and go all the time. You know, the, the latest big thing, they come and they go, come and they go, but we just concentrate on trying to make them, our music as good as possible. And, uh, and, to, and by doing that, I think that's the best way you can actually try and keep your fans. If you started worrying you know, whether there whether, whether there's going to be fans there, I think you'd like, you know, start thinking about you know, the music you made. We, you know, we just make music for ourselves, music that we like. And then hopefully someone someone out there likes it, and then people will come along to the concert. Yeah, the music's the most important thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's coming out back in fashion. Does it influence your decision to go on a historical tour? Um, well, I don't think you could ever say that we've been trendy. <laughs> That's probably why we've lasted so long. I don't think we've ever been trendy. I mean, it, it, it certainly helps, I'm sure. Uh, um, we, we like to see as a, as a band of the 90s, you know, as we, we don't try and go on all these 80s compilations that come out. Um, it just so happens our, our music does span the 80s and 90s. So, in fact, most of the tracks on this new album are going to be from the 90s. So, um, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Last time, so um, what kind of precautions are you going to take this time to prevent that? 
We've Ooh. got rules. We've got rules that you keep. Uh, I only drink two days a week. <laughs> you may laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you started your career in the 80s as, a, as something like a teeny band or teeny group. What do you want to be in the end of the 90s, please? Back, we'll be back. <laughs> as a senior. Yeah. Yeah. And what else? I think it's, you know, again, nice to be considered at the end of the 90s still to be a sort of a credible and a very well-known band that's still making uh, good music, I suppose. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's, as I said, you know, we're really fortunate that we've been able to make records over virtually two decades, and there's not many bands that get to do that. Um, so, you know, that's it really. You know, I, I don't think, like, it's, I think there's too much emphasis based on, like, 80s, 90s, you know, 70s, 60s, whatever. You know, it's, uh, we're just still making music, and we still want to play, and we still have fans that want to come and see us. It's as simple as that, really. Also, we're very lucky when we started, we were very young as well. So, hopefully we're still young now, aren't we? 36? Is that young? No. That was a serious question. How nervous are you about going on the road again? Well, sitting in now, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to desperately stop my body from shaking. <laughs> um, so I don't know, you know, we did it. We did a couple of performances, like just with, um, with just playing a few songs with Ultra and, and uh, these launch party things that we did, and um, it was really nerve wracking. Um, but I think it's good to be nervous, you know. It's uh, nervous energy can be kind of put into into, into performing, and uh, for me personally, it's 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 pretty important. If I wasn't feeling nervous, I think there'd be something wrong. But yeah, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Uh, how much people could we expect on stage? Well, we're going to use a, a drummer uh, full time on stage. He's an Austrian guy. Um, he's really good, and he worked with, worked with us on the on the TV show Christian. Which is I, 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 uh, Christian Eiger. Eichner. And we might we think we might have a couple of backing singers and perhaps one synth player, something like that. You know, I don't know. At the moment, as well, uh, Tim Simonon, our producer, as well, wants to come on stage for a couple of songs. So. He, he may come and scratch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> scratch his head. <laughs> scratch his head. <laughs> Whatever that is, we're not quite sure, but we heard it's quite hip. <laughs> but in the beginning, you started with a lot of keyboard playing, so now the guitar has become more and more important. So, would you describe yourself now as a rock and roll band? Not really. I mean, <laughs> I started playing instruments when I was 13. I started playing guitar. I didn't see a synthesizer until I was about 18. So, in, in a way, it was unnatural for me to be a synthesizer player for like the first 10 years of our history or whatever, no, seven years or whatever. So it was like a natural thing for me to progress and play guitar because it was, you know, that, that's how I started off. So, you know, when we did our list of songs, if you look at it, it's about 80% of the songs I'll be playing guitar on because that, you know, 80% of our songs have guitars. But you know there there are songs where I play synthesizer. You know it's just a it's natural. You know it's a natural thing for us to do. I think as well, like all, I mean for me, like all my favourite performers and singers have always been from great rock and roll bands. What I would consider great rock and roll bands. So, for example, you know, Mick Jagger. You know um, people like that. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Donny Osmond. And, uh, <laughs> I can't think of any more. <laughs> <laughs> what about contemporary bands that are, that are around now? Do you have any, any players? Anybody that you need to align yourself with or think might, might have been influenced by your sound? Um, I think, I think it's, there's, there's probably a lot of, a lot of bands that are, are, are at some point have been influenced by what we do. You know, made, you know, not necessarily the songs, but more like the way we work. You know, um, Bands like Progeny and stuff like that. I'm sure that you know, but but you know, as far as like us taking influences from them, I don't know. You know, we, I think we've always just tried to keep listening to what's going on. And um, you know, the last the last record I bought was the Verve record. I like that record. What about Diesel Christ? I don't. Diesel, Di Diesel Christ. Diesel Christ. Yeah. I've never heard of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I like the I like the idea of what they did with uh, Songs of Faith and Devotion. They you know, take the album and, and do it in a way that they thought that we should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to but, hear that. But it, you know, had they done it right, it would have been interesting. You know. <laughs> I think what, what's really nice is before the um, before our greatest hits. I hate that term, greatest hits. It's a uh, it's a single. It's ninety six, uh, eighty six to ninety eight comes out. We've got this tribute album that comes out in the summer, which is really interesting because there's you know a lot of contemporary bands covering our songs, you know, and that finally is that there's some good bands that have decided to cover our songs, and it it doesn't originate from Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Frederick. <laughs> Over there. I think, you know, you have to look at what records you're making now, you know, and if you still consider those records to be good, then that's um, OK to carry on. The problem is, is getting to that stage, you know. Um, I mean, we think our, our last record was one of our best records, so we think that's good, you know. I think as long as you... You know, as, as a band, we're interested in working with each other and interested in making music and performing it. it doesn't really, it doesn't. It's, it's, if anything, it's a compliment. You know, isn't it the greatest honour you can have, for like you know, for a, a lot of contemporary bands to cover your songs and admit that you were an influence? That's, that's surely the greatest honour you can have. And why should we then say, "Oh, sorry, we've been in this game too long." You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I take it as the greatest honour I could have. You know. I mean, it's quite a wide spectrum of, of bands as well, you know, even at the top end, like, you know, Smashing Pumpkins have done one, and The Cure, and who else is there? Well, and it's, 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 the interesting thing about it is it's a lot of like, alternative rock bands, so it's not particularly electronic-based. You know, it's, it's like coming from this American alternative rock angle, which we've been a great influence on. Can we have more questions? At the back there. Yeah. Any sporting acts? We haven't yet. Um, as Mark said, you know, Tim's prob Tim Simonon from Bond the Bass is going to. Um, I don't know. We haven't really thought about that uh, the, that much of them. Well, we are thinking about it, but we haven't decided on anything. Whoever wants to support us, we decided it should be someone we dislike because they, they pick up a lot of spare change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, and they have to wear armour. <laughs> in London? In London, probably, yeah. Well, we got our, you know, I mean, it's, it's harder for Dave because he lives in New York now, but um, I mean, it's where our families uh, live and. Um, you know, it's, when you're going away for four months, you know, we find, think it's important to, like, to be as close to them as possible before we go away. I mean, it's also about, you know, common sense. We live there, you know, two of us live there, and it's, there are rehearsal studios there. We could, we could <laughs> go somewhere else, but it's common sense dictates the fact maybe we should rehearse in London. <laughs> Plus, we're all really selfish. <laughs> and two beats one. <laughs> Which songs did those contemporary bands cover? All across the board, really. Um, Smashing Pumpkins did Never Let Me Down. Um, the Cure have covered World of My Eyes. And it's like, there's all kinds of stuff like Fly on the Windscreen, Somebody. Well, even. I Feel You. I Feel yeah. You was that. That's Apollo, Apollo 440. Apollo 440 yeah. did that. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's not just singles, um, there's album tracks and B sides. I'm sure that there will be a press conference for that. So can we have more questions <laughs> regarding the tour? <laughs> No, it's an interesting angle, though, Anna. <laughs> interesting angle. Well, I'm working for your record company, don't I? So... <laughs> oh, sorry, it's, that is not coming out on Intercord, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no offence to Polygram. <laughs> How much do you plan for the States? Similar sort of time, two months, something like that. We finish, actually, before Christmas, so it's a nice, uh, nice little package. <laughs> and also, that's, which is not on this list, we're thinking of doing some Eastern European gigs before... Helsinki as well. Maybe Russia, which we've never been to before. So, last question. Yeah. Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, St John's Wood correspondent. Concerning the way you heard from your music life, is there anything new you would like to experiment, something you've never tried in the past, and that would be a good occasion because it could be one of the last tour? Is well, this musically? Is this a, musically? Apart from the dance routines we mentioned earlier. You know? <laughs> 
transform your music, you got some records where you put it live. Very well, you. yeah, I mean, you know, one using a drummer throughout the whole the whole show is, uh, it, you know, that's something we experimented with on the Songs of Faith and Devotion tour. Um, and we used backing singers there and that worked well, so we'll be using that. And like Fletch said, you know, we need the keyboard player because Alan's not with us anymore and he played a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think, and the, and the couple of little things that we did with the ultra party things that we did, it, it really did transform the old songs quite a bit, I think. You know, um, for me, it, was, I, I, it felt a lot more exciting to feel the drummer behind me and stuff. No questions? Over there. Have you already been uh, writing any new material or any plans for... Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> We've been in the studio for the last two months and um, we're finishing off a single at the moment, as we speak, actually. So we get back tonight and the mix should be finished. It was almost finished when we left yesterday. So we're going back and we'll finish it off tonight or tomorrow. And there's another couple of new songs that will go on the, the first single package. So, yeah, we, we have been working on new stuff, yeah. Self-produced? With, with Tim Simonon from Bomb the Bass, again. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that guy who scratches his head some night. The lady over there. And when do your fans come expect a new album? God, God knows. Well, actually, the good thing is that um, with this tour being, you know, only four, four months long, I think, you know, I think we all agree that, you know, we haven't released as, as many records as we should have over the last six or seven years, you know. That's what our fans think. The, the average person in the street probably doesn't know that. But uh, so it'd be good to actually get an album done, you know, as, as soon as possible, you know. But I can't tell you when that will be. We, we, yeah, these days it's like, seems to be traditional, it's like three or four years between albums and I don't know if we'll actually get any quicker, but... Don't yeah, hold your breath. No. <laughs> it's, I, I find it incredible that we released an album every year for like the first, I don't know, seven years of our career. How we did that, don't ask me. But then uh, I've listened to him, yeah, ask me. <laughs> well, not if we're going to do some gigs before. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> now, there's, there's, yeah. we we're thinking about that, you know, because we... We've got a lot of fans in the um, eastern part of Europe and um, it'd be nice to do a few warm-up gigs out there. Yeah. Don't know we don't know where they are yet. No. We have a good idea, but yeah. as the press are here, no, we haven't got a clue. That's <laughs> what <laughs> <Actually>, we know. Let me guess what's No. You insisted on uh, the fact that you're, you were using a keyboarder and a full-time drummer. Um, do you need to play everything live, every note? Other bands get away with playing that. It's a very interesting question, and when it's uh, it's weird that we've never heard a question like that before. <laughs> so, you know, we always got like attacked for years and years and years for doing that, and probably being you know some of the first one of the first bands to do that and and openly admit to it. Um, but yeah, it's it's gone on. You know, bands have been doing that for years. You know, whether it be Pink Floyd or Depeche Mode, you know that. Um, for us, it's something very different, you know, <laughs> to uh, try and perform a lot of the stuff live. But we were using computers, you know, uh, on stage, so... It's still impossible for us to play absolutely everything live because our records are too complex. Of course we have to run computers. You know, it's... It, it's not, I think that's a... Enough, right? It's <laughs> a, you know, it, it, it's a fact, you know, and I think anyone with any sense will realise that we have to run computers live. Andy, uh, what kind of role you have in the band now? Just to say a few jokes and, you know, yeah. do introductions to speeches at dinners and things like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, the other guys, do they trust him? Do they, do they don't trust me. <laughs> they don't trust me at all, no. no. It's by sheer stealth I've managed to keep in here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, Depeche Mode, Andy David. Thank you. Martin, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.